This is the Triton Trumpet, a gift from our very first graduating class, the class of 2018. It's become a symbol of our school spirit. As is tradition, we sound the Triton Trumpet at athletic games, as we send our graduates into the world, and as we welcome a new generation of Tritons into our community. It's my privilege as AS president to welcome each of you to the 2019-2020 school year. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Reagan? All right. A.S. President. Students, family, faculty, friends, good evening, and welcome to the fifth annual dedication service of Pacifica Christian. 
It's such a pleasure to be with so many new and returning faces tonight as we celebrate the dawn of a new school year. My name is Reagan Phillips. I'm a senior, and I get to serve as AS president. And actually, I was, I was talking with someone a little before the service, and she asked me if it was bittersweet to welcome you all today. And I can understand feeling a little bitter, because while I'm standing here today welcoming an entirely new generation of Tritons, soon I'll be bidding this home of four years farewell. But this feeling is overwhelmingly sweet, not just because of the incredible memories of the past three years that have brought us all together, but because of the even greater growth and joy God is breathing into our community as we speak. Just next month, we kick things off with our all-school retreat. We're going to spend four days of bonding, competition, and reflection at the incredible Young Life Lost Canyon Camp in Williams, Arizona. That is going to be great. Come on, round of applause for that. Then it's time for our unbelievably talented athletes to shine with a number of championship-bound teams tipping off, kicking off, and hitting their first serves. And the gifted arts department is slated to lift the curtain on two talented performances, starting with the diary of Anne Frank this fall. And that's only the beginning. I know that as the coming year progresses, our students will continue to excel and our facilities will continue to be enhanced as God blesses us with so many amazing opportunities. And when you boil it all down, that's what Pacifica offers. A chance to be amazed. Amazed at the power of Boethius and C.S. Lewis to change the way we view the world. Amazed at the way physics reveals the immeasurable beauty of God's creation. Amazed at how sitting in circles for four years will forever change the way we interact with each other. Now, we've come a long way since our founding, but none of it would have been possible without the grace of God and the faithful dedication of our faculty, family, and friends. This community cares about us, not just as students, but as young men and women, and that's a unique blessing. To borrow a phrase from the esteemed Mr. Balmer, we owe you all much love and mad respect. <laughs> Finally, on behalf of the entire Pacifica community, I'd like to especially thank the members of the Board of Trustees for the countless hours of their lives that they've poured into making our high school experience the best it can be. Even though most of us hardly get to see that, each of us is blessed daily by the tangible products of your passion. And with that, I'd like to invite a member of, the, of our Board of Trustees, Mr. Matt Anderson, to deliver an opening prayer. Thanks, Reagan. Would you do this? Would you stand with me? And if you come to dinner in my household, what you have to do if we pray is that you hold hands with the person next to you. So aisles don't apply. You get to hold hands with everybody next to you right now. We'll give this a try. There's an aisle here that's got no hands being held. <laughs> and then you've totally failed right here. Here, hang on. Hold hands all the way across. <laughs> all right, are we ready? Here we go. Our Father in heaven, you are the author of all that is good, all that is true, all that is beautiful. We come before you today with our minds racing in anticipation of what lies ahead, with our hearts overflowing at the sight of your good provision, with our stomachs churning with butterflies and doubts and curiosity in our souls that can feel your immeasurable love and our extraordinary worth. Lord, we are very excited. We stand here together as a new class of Pacifica Tritons. We stand here together looking to you, our Father in heaven, for your provision and guidance. For Lord, we know and we trust that you are omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, and immutable. Let's say it again. God, you are all-knowing, always present, all-powerful, never changing and without end. And as we enter our new school year, as we enter Pacifica, 
will you provide us with depth, authenticity, and perspective? Lord, would you provide depth that we might drink deeply from good books, especially the Bible? Authenticity that each one of us, that each one of us would be fully known and fully loved. And perspective that you would encourage each of us to play our key part in your bigger story. Lord, would you teach us to be men and women who think well and live well. And as we work through it all, the bad and the good, the gut-wrenching missteps, and the incredible mountaintop highs. <laughs> oh Lord, would you hear our voice that we could taste and see your steadfast goodness. We pray all of this, Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Would you welcome one of our alumni, Olivia Garcia, to the stage? be so kind and if you're able would you go ahead and stand with us <laughs> only if you're able I would ask that you would join your voices with ours and in that way may our hearts be joined together as well um, this hymn is beautiful it's also our school song so this is a great opportunity for our new Pacificans, our new Tritons, to learn this song. And hopefully our returning Tritons will help them out. Um, man, if this goes right, this place is just going to be loud. So join us. are in your bulletin there. Be thou my battle shield, sword for my fight. Be thou my dignity, thou my delight. Thou my soul shelter, thou my high tower. Raise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I empty praise Thou mine inheritance now and always Thou and Thou only first in my heart High King of Heaven My treasure Thou art Alright, now just our voices High King of Heaven My victory May I reach heaven's joys, O oh bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh ruler of all. Still be my vision, O oh ruler of all. Amen. Welcome back, Tritons. Yeah. Woo! 
You know, I, I said it last year, and I hope I say it every dedication. It is so good to see our alumni in the house. Yes. We have graduates and students represented from every school, every grade in the school's history. I hope that can be said every year for the next 100 years. Wouldn't that be something? I also want to put a special welcome to our new class of our community, the class of 2023. Friends, we are so excited that you are here, and we're excited about the goodness you're going to bring to our community. And so I hope that you feel welcome and that our hospitality has brought you in thus far. Now, as there's so many of you and of our transfers, it means that not everybody here knows me that well. So as we get going, I thought there's a few things you should know. So first, my first girlfriend ever. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? Just wait. So my first girlfriend ever, she, um, she breaks up with me because I'm too nervous to hold her hand at couples skating at the skating rink. In college, I wrote in my Shakespeare class, I wrote two papers on the same book in the same course, and wait for it, I didn't know I did it. <laughs> and friends, when I was in high school, when I sat in the pews that our students sit in now, I was bereft of peace. From the outside, I looked like I had it all together, but inside I was spinning. Today, I'm married to my best friend, Dana, and we have two beautiful girls, and Hadley and Chloe, hi ladies. I went from failing my college midterm in Shakespeare to running a college prep class, go figure. And today I live with the peace and the joy that knows no end. So friends, Pacificans, if this knucklehead can figure out life after high school, you, Pacifica students, you're gonna be just fine. So this week, we're gonna begin by asking our freshmen the question, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> I realize that's also funny. Nobody asked me that, I think, till maybe I was 22, and no one seriously asked me that till I was 26. And then at the end of this year, to our seniors, we will ask you, friends, how then shall you live? Now, I'm here to tell you how you live between that first question, what is the meaning of life, and that last question, how then shall you live? is going to be the basis and the foundation for your adult life far more than you can ever understand or imagine at this point in your life. Therefore, my encouragement to us today and this year is be present, stay committed, and give everything you have until God moves you on. Now, one of the hardest places to live is in the present. So many people around us, they live in two places, either in the hope of some coming future or in the glory of their, their past long gone. And they spend both of their whole life in these places. And I know that all of you know where you'll be tomorrow. At least I hope you do. The question I have for you is what will you do with your time this year? Here's my experience observing high schoolers. You'll spend the next four years or a couple months building a resume to earn admittance to the top college of your choice. You'll then spend the next four years of, of your time there building a second resume to get your first job out of college. You're then gonna spend several decades perfecting that resume to earn the job that gets you the means by which you hope to attain the good life. Now, I'm not saying that there's a lot of good things that can happen along this path. Many of these things are incredibly good. But here's my caution to you today. Do not create the habit of always looking to the future while missing the moment right now, or the person to your left or to your right. Do not become so obsessed with your future that you miss what God is doing with you here. Our lives are not linear. What I mean by this is you can't say I'm gonna go to A and then B and then C and so on. You can't map these things out. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, so you must hold on to your plans lightly, making space for God to act, for him to surprise you, to free you from your plans, to lead in a grand adventure full and complete with joy, mystery, and even uncertainty. When you think about your desire to change our world, and what I love about Pacifica students is this is one of your desires, to have great impact in the world. When you think about that, I want you to start this year, as Jill Briscoe would say, with the space between your two feet. Change the world right there. And then let God and your passions and your experiences guide you. 
Worry less about your future plans. Be present with the people and the opportunities that are in front of you today. You can only live in the present. You don't really have a choice in this. And it's in the present where God and others are with you. Where God is near, literally breathing peace and joy and mercy and goodness and reconciliation into your life. The greatest gift of being present comes from living each moment in the actual presence of God. As Brother Lawrence said, quote, I urge everyone to be aware of God's constant presence. If for no other reason than his presence is where our de- is delight to our souls and to our spirit. Which might seem really lofty language, but think about what you desire most. So this foundation that you are building in these high school years for your adulthood, it starts with being present. And it deepens as you make and keep lasting commitments. Up until today, your lives have been in constant change, right? In a very short period, you've moved from this very beautiful baby, one that your parents probably long for, or at least your mom does, to a self-sufficient, competent, we hope, emerging adult. Now, unless, of course, you're one of those teenagers that after buying your first uh, carton of milk or taking, doing your first laundry, you take a selfie and you post that to Snapchat with the hashtag adulting, if that's you, I want you to pay special attention to these next few minutes. But seriously, right? Over the last 10 years, most of you have probably attended three different schools. Some of you more. You've gone through puberty. Your body has changed. Your voice has changed. (laughs) You've experienced success. You've experienced failure. You've changed your friend groups. And in a few months, seniors, or in a few years, the rest of us, you're going to trade everything you know today for some future and new reality. Approximately four years from then, you will graduate college or pursue a career, and then you'll enter into the marketplace. And at that time, mom and dad, according to Barna, 30% of them are coming back to you. (laughs) And then all of you will continue to change jobs every two to three years on average. With this much change and uncertainty in life, it is incredibly difficult to learn how to make and keep commitments. And staying committed is not any easier. Let's look around us. People are constantly moving from one thing or person to the next in the hope that this time they will find what they are looking for only to find that nothing has changed. They let their circumstances determine their commitments. Now at Pacifica, we are, we are uh, in a continual pursuit, as you've heard already, of things that are true and good and beautiful. Along the way, you're going to be given grace, and we're going to ask you to give it away also. We're going to develop your convictions alongside your curiosity. We're going to have you extend compassion to your classmates while you practice intellectual hospitality. And we do not ask you to do these things merely for a grade or to earn admittance to your top college choice. No, we ask you to do these things to teach you how to make lifelong commitments. Commitments to everything that is good and beautiful. A commitment to trust God. A commitment to live the way in which he's called you to. A commitment to do the work he has given to you. A commitment to do what is right and good, especially when it terrifies you. A commitment to live a life full of learning and the pursuit of joy. Ultimately, a commitment to to a life of love. But you have to hear this. First, love of God. Then, a love of every human person who he brings into your life. Which, friends, that is in our entire community. Your accomplishments, I don't believe, will determine the quality of your life. Your commitments, however, I think they will. So resolve today to remain committed in your relationships, to your beliefs, to the church, and to whatever God wants to do in your life, no matter the circumstances. So I want you to be present. I want you to stay committed. And finally, I want you to give it everything you have until God moves you somewhere else. Friends, life is a grand adventure. It is. It doesn't always feel like that because we live it in the ordinary spaces of life. But it's an adventure. And I promise you that God is going to use everything about you to do his work in our world. If you let him. If you let him, let him, he's going to use your keen mind or your ability to read a room or the color of your skin or your love of people or your, uh, your lack of confidence or your awkward smile. Remember I always talk about my teeth? Your, your awkward teeth. He's going to use all of this, the failures you've experienced, to bring about goodness in our world. If you let him. So do not run from who you are. You're the only one. God made you specific and unique for a purpose. 
Do not doubt your value or what you bring to every situation. You matter. And what you do in each moment and through each season, it matters. So in every season, trust that God's going to provide you with community, with meaning and purpose and with work and new opportunities. And he will be with you throughout. And friends, this is where your work begins. So this year, if you find yourself interested in starting a side business or working your first job, give everything you have to create value and to spur on our economy. So if you're coming home from school and your mom texts you and says, we need to sit down and chat, and she shares with you that your grandfather has just been diagnosed with cancer, God forbid this happens. But if it happens, give everything you, you have to be present in his pain, not just for that moment, but for that entire season of his life. When your brother or sister is driving you crazy, might I add, the way you drive your parents crazy, love them. Give everything you have to love them. The day your teacher pulls you aside and gives you uh, uh, the praise of you're doing incredible work as they hand back an assignment that you gave everything to, stop and give thanks and give everything you have to remain with humility and continue in the good work. When God calls you to serve in the church or stand up for a friend who's being mistreated or to befriend a classmate who feels alone or to give what you have for the good of somebody else or to pick up your cross and to follow him, go, go and give everything you have. I do not know what this year will look like for all of us, for any one of you. But as you continue your your preparation for adulthood, be present. Stay committed and give everything you have until the Lord moves you on. Or as we say here at Pacifica, go and think and live well. And may the Lord be with us as we do. Much love and mad respect, friends. We'll see you tomorrow. Hello, my name is Rebecca Lee, and I'm a proud member of the senior class of Pacifica. I'd like to start by thanking the faculty and staff, the board of trustees, and the families and friends here this evening. Thank you. To all who invest in Pacifica through contribution, or prayer, or love, or support of the extraordinary vision for this school, thank you so much. Being a part of something greater than ourselves is a gift that shouldn't be taken for granted. And it's on the subject of gifts that I'd like to spend these next few minutes. James 1.17 tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. The God of the universe is the giver of all good gifts. He created and gave us a heavenly family, delicious food, beautiful beaches, and the joy of music. He gave us Pacifica. And through all of these wonderful gifts, he reminds us that we don't have to do life alone. He desires to be the driving power and motivation of our lives. Through him, we can view this world and this approaching school year in a completely different perspective. To me personally, this year feels like the beginning of an end because the class of 2020 and I are embarking upon our final year of high school. Even though we will experience an urge to rush through this year, we must finish well. Yet this year also feels like the end of a beginning. As Reagan mentioned last May in his presidential speech to the student body, we are builders. Two classes have graduated from Pacifica, providing us with the amazing foundation upon which we now stand. It is our joy and responsibility, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, to build something lasting through the supernatural power of the love of Jesus Christ. His love is a total game changer. It enables us to change our I have to's into I get to. I want to, I'd love to, for the glory of God and for the good of one another. So this year, in light of the gifts God has given each of us, let's live intentional lives. Our school was not fashioned by accident and neither will the meaningful relationships we will forge this year. Through the love of Jesus, let's speak well and listen well. Let's volunteer for games of retreat and sing out in chapel. Let's ask good questions and pray for one another. Let's assume the best about people especially when it is difficult. And if we do, I truly believe that the best is yet to come. Thank you. Good evening. Thanksgiving really is so properly due for this sacred, precious, and miraculous institution. 
So let me begin with an expression of gratitude for this school and a heartfelt thank you to Mr. O'Neill, our board, for the honor of speaking this evening. And further, could we all join together in an expression of appreciation for our teachers, our parents, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, of course, the reason for it all, you, the students. Will you all join me in celebrating each other? My name is Angela Ward. I'm the Director of Arts, and I'm so honored to speak with you this evening. Last year, Mr. Bellum's speech about offering hospitality to strangers set the tone for a beautiful year, and my family was one of many recipients of Pacifica's really genuine hospitality. My son Titus was a transfer student and I was a new employee and the generosity of this school, the generosity of spirit here at Pacifica changed us. Now as returning families, you may know me as the director of arts who is crazy about Shakespeare. However, I'm also a historian and before coming to Pacifica, I was selected by the James Madison Foundation to receive a fellowship for a master's degree in American history and government. And I spent some time at Georgetown University this summer working on that degree, studying the Constitution and the American founding. And I thought of Pacifica constantly because the impossible miracle of the American founding is so similar to the founding, to the miracle of Pacifica. Both the United States and Pacifica originated as the dream of people on a quest, people who wanted to spread ideals of liberty and civic virtue. Both the United States and Pacifica were founded in a reliance on the best and truest ideas known to man. Both places brought very different people with different backgrounds and beliefs together. And you are now part of this freshman. You are each so unique. And you may feel at this moment that you are all so very different from one another. But you're here because you are supposed to be here. And because you, you possess one or more of the three traits possessed by the American founders that I'd like to discuss this evening. Uh, traits shared by the Pacifica founders. And these traits are love, strong character, and desire for freedom of, and justice. You may not be aware of those things inside of you yet. I wasn't at your age. Let me share my first day of high school with you. I was dropped off in front of the school and there wasn't a teacher in sight. I saw cliques of people standing in little groups in front of the gym, so I headed over that way. I was completely ignored by everybody, and I had no idea what to do. After several awkward and horrible moments, one girl from a group turned around and smirked at me and said, you can stand over here if you want. <laughs> Her friends looked at her and laughed, and then they all turned away from me. I muttered, thank you, and I walked over and I joined the group. No one said hi, no one even looked at me, no one even acknowledged my existence. That was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life till that time. But as a teen in my life, I had my two constant homies with me, George Washington and William Shakespeare. I truly felt like one of Shakespeare's tragic heroines, and I was always comparing myself to George Washington, whom at that time I thought was perfect. Neither of those muses helped me at all in that situation. However, the ever-present companion of Washington and of Shakespeare and of all of us was with me. Jesus was with me. Jesus knew how it felt to be rejected, yet he loved everybody anyway. I knew he was with me, and I began to learn that my strongest weapon and my strongest protection was love. 
As I came to Pacifica as a teacher, I witnessed the opposite of my high school experience. I'm so excited to share that with you. On the first day of school, teachers were greeting students everywhere, and students were not in isolated clumps. Noisy love was everywhere. Pacifica reflects classic truths of the Bible, the same truths which are restated so prolifically in Shakespeare and by George Washington. And one of these truths is love one another and build each other up. Love takes practice. And practicing virtue builds character, and pursuit of character meant everything to George Washington. As a young person, though, he was like you. At 14 years old, he didn't always get along with his mom, and there was no dad in his life. His dad had died when he was 11 years old. But he was determined to make something of himself, and he always worked on his character. Now, this is not politically correct to acknowledge, but George Washington relied heavily on the Bible and on other classic works like those of Aristotle to build his character. He used the book of Proverbs in the Bible as a life resource, and interestingly, he also frequently quoted the book of Micah. Uh, but like all humans, George Washington failed gigantically at times. I wish someone had told me that when I was in high school. I beat myself up for not being perfect, and every failure cut me to the core. Absolutely no one is perfect. Washington, at 22 years old, made a stupid mistake that basically began the French and Indian War in the United States. Washington lost two-thirds of the battles he fought in the American Revolution, but... He won the war, and his desire to keep building his own good character was so great, and his ability to fail forward made people love him. Throughout his life, he kept working on his character. He kept taking risks, and he became the father of our nation. The practice of building strong, good character is vital to a free nation, and it's vital to Pacifica. Taking risks and failing forward and assuming the best in each other is part of the process. Finally, let me tell you about a skinny, quiet, sickly, shy 18-year-old. He was short and a little bit self-conscious about that, and he didn't have many friends, maybe because of all of his health issues. He had what was probably a form of epilepsy, and he had chronic hemorrhoids so badly that at times he couldn't sit down. Understandably, socializing was hard for him. But he went to a new school, and he met a mentor who saw the best in him and empowered him with the great ideas of civilization, the same ideas that Pacifica's teachers will share with you. And these are not ideas commonly taught in most high schools these days. Well, this skinny kid grabbed hold of his education. He developed a belief in God. He developed a new image of himself, seeing himself as his teacher saw him, and he changed the world. He's known as the father of the Constitution, the author of religious freedom in the United States, the fourth president, and is considered by some to be the most influential of the founding fathers. His name is James Madison. Perhaps his many obstacles in life made him such an advocate for freedom and justice. Now, the three people that I've introduced you to this evening, me, Washington, and Madison, are all humans with human failings. It was later in his life that Washington deeply understood how intolerable and morally abhorrent slavery was, and he tried to correct it. In his will, he freed the enslaved persons on his plantation, bequeathing property, education, and job skills training to them but it was in his will, not his lifetime. And James Madison hated slavery, refusing to have the word appear in the Constitution, supporting legislation to abolish it. But Madison never freed his own slaves. Because like each one of us, they were human beings with serious moral failings. But God performed miracles in, through, and around them. And the invisible hand, as George Washington sometimes called God, that invisible hand, in spite of their failures, used their gifts 
and the gifts given to them by their mentors to create the freest, most democratic government in history with the longest lasting constitution in the world. And as for me, I feel unworthy to stand here before you knowing my many mistakes in life. But the invisible hand of God is always with me. And here at Pacifica, I'm safe to fail because failure is a part of growing in character. There is liberty at this school. You are free to organize your time. There is justice at this school. Your mentors, like George Washington, believe in a willingness to forgive and to assume the best in others. Last year's graduating class, wrote messages all over the floor in a section of the new building, and I hope so much that you get a chance to read them, because they will advise you to remember that you are now Pacifica. In their own way, they quote Washington. <laughs> they urge you to work hard, play hard, and love like crazy, even when you don't feel like it. Paint your face, throw toilet paper at a basketball game, eat lunch with a teacher, and push yourself to work hard and play hard. Assume the best in others. Become a connector, a creator, an ethical decision base, an ethical decision maker on a daily basis. Our ideas, our daily acts of love and good character, no matter how small, and our honest and fair choices in pursuit of something bigger than ourselves will build a school that impacts the nation and the world. Pacifica like America, is all of us, and at the same time, much bigger than all of us. G.K. Chesterton said, America is a nation with a soul. Angela Ward says, Pacifica is a school with a soul. Through the love of the companion who is always with us, we can do all things in spite of our human limitations. We are all founders of the 2019-2020 school year. Pacifica, let's roll. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ward. School with a soul, I like that. We're going to spend some time praying for, uh, for these students. I'm going to lead in the litany of dedication. If you don't have your program out already, pull it out. Students, you too. We are, or each of you is assigned a group. You'll see leader, parents, faculty, and staff, and so on. And I want you to find your group. Students, I'm kind of looking at you right now. See where you are in, in bold. I'm going to start us off in this prayer. And then when we get to the next section, to parents, I'll read parents, and I'll ask you to stand up. Actually, I'm not going to ask you to stand up. When I say your name, why don't you just stand up? And then I'll read the first line, and I'll trail off, and I'll allow you guys to continue praying the part. Today is a very important day for our Pacifica students. As a community, we are celebrating a passage into a new phase of life for each individual. We give thanks to God for his provision and look forward with hope to his continued blessings in the future. We present these students before the Lord now, and commit to support them in their journey ahead. Parents. Lord, we commit to continue to be used by you. Faculty and staff, Lord, we accept these students as a sacred trust. Board of Trustees and Pacifica community members. Lord, we commit to support this school in its venture to grow.
Students, Lord, we begin our Pacifica journey. All. Lord, take our lives and transform them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for you. As we begin this journey together as one united community, let us carry the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing. Please stand and uh, sing the doxology with me, please. One more time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Hello, my name is Anna Hammond, and I'm a junior here at Pacifica and the spiritual life prefect. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love which surrounds us daily. We thank you for your grace which pursues us constantly. And we thank you for your truth which brightens our world always. The blessing that you have placed upon Pacifica Christian and the impact that this school has had on all of us is indescribable. In light of this, we pray that you continue to hold this beautiful school in your hands and that we as people of Pacifica begin to not only impact each other, but the people of this world. For the parents, I pray that they may feel connected and blessed, not only by the school, but by their children. For the staff, I pray for joy and patience, that they may touch our hearts again this school year, and that we may reach to touch theirs. And for the students, I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding, and a love for both their peers learning, and Christ. Amen. Please join us in the foyer. Thank you. <laughs> 